To become a monster bug warrior, you need the skills of a butcher. They know what they're doing, and they do it well. The appetite of a cannibal, and the conscience of a serial killer. At the same time they're being paralyzed, they're also being liquefied on the inside. But even then, your next fight might be your last. In the bug world, the smallest creature can be the cruelest killer. But some corners of the rainforest breed truly terrifying giants. When a red rump tarantula goes up against a giant cockroach, it's a battle of the megabonds. Deep in the Costa Rican jungle, something burrows through the leaf litter. A creature that sparks fear and loathing in equal measure. A menacing monster with hooded armor and a four-inch body. This beast lives up to its title, the giant cockroach. These cockroaches are the biggest cockroaches on Earth. They're opportunistic carnivores, omnivores, whatever they can get to eat. It's a camouflage expert, blending in perfectly with the leaf litter. Large compound eyes wrap around the antennae like alien sunglasses. But for this mega bug, sight isn't as important as chemical detection. Kept scrupulously clean, thread-like antennae, almost twice as long as the giant's enormous body, probe the air for telltale smells and air currents. The huge body is defended by hardened wing cases. An armored collar called a pronotum shields the head and thorax. Powerful spine-covered limbs rake across opponents' bodies, tearing and ripping their flesh. Would-be predators must also contend with sharp mandibles that hack and slash. Their mandibles are relatively small, but they're really strong, and they're designed to be able to take apart almost anything that they encounter. When they fight, they'll use their legs, and they can also rip the opponent's legs off, so they can be pretty dangerous. But today, Another bug world titan is on the prowl. A male red rump tarantula. Tarantulas have been around for a very long time, way before the dinosaurs. And everything about them is supersized. Their legs, their bodies, their fangs, and their ability to turn other animals into yesterday's news. This male's mean enough to play nasty, but against a roach on roids, smart enough to play safe. That swipe wasn't a predatory act of aggression. It was a defensive swipe driven purely by fear. When tarantulas are threatened, they'll rear up in front of a foe, raising the front legs and flashing their fangs. But biting is usually the last line of defense. Besides, this male tarantula isn't hunting for food. He's looking for love, but tarantula love is a one-sided affair. The male red rump tarantula is a monster, but the female, that's where the word extreme isn't extreme enough. She's five to six inches across, positively humongous, and she can live over 20 years. 
When a female meets a male, she will either mate him or eat him. Unfortunately, he doesn't know which. For some males, that's just too risky. This big mama doesn't miss much. Her eight small eyes, grouped close together, provide only poor vision. Instead, she hunts by vibration. Her massive body and legs are covered in long sensory hairs. Hair also forms a unique defense. Beneath the red rump's fiery abdominal hair, tiny barbed strands called urticating hairs can be flicked onto an approaching enemy. They're like fiberglass, so you can imagine if they get into somewhere sensitive or in the eyes, the itching would drive a predator crazy. This male is prepared to risk his life for a mate, even though she can be the date from hell. Courting behavior in these spiders is a complex ritual with all sorts of palpable drumming, body vibrations, and leg tapping. You don't just walk up and say, how you doing? The female has one goal, to have her eggs fertilized. Otherwise, the male is just one more piece of meat. Her huge fangs, like daggers, pierce his head. The fangs are truly scary, up to a third of an inch long in the females and quite wide. Because these are ancient spiders, they're more like ice picks than pinchers. What the tarantulas do is drive the fangs down with incredible force, which opens up massive wounds in the prey's body. Now her juices start flowing. Digestive enzymes break down her would-be lover. His flesh dissolves. What the male had hoped would be dinner for two is now soup for one. The giant cockroach has intimidated one male tarantula tonight. But what happens when a monstrous female weighs in? This big female tarantula, she's much less likely to be threatened off just by the size of this cockroach. She's much more likely to take it on. But this is a good-sized cockroach. It could be a real battle, and it could take a really long time. Next, rainforest giants on the rampage. Then, carnage with clubs and claws. And later, Super Scrappers, slug it out. Nightfall in the rainforest. A giant cockroach lumbers through the leaf litter. On a collision course, with a female red rump tarantula. The tarantula has massive fangs and paralyzing venom. The giant cockroach has sturdy armor and spiked legs that can wound. Which of these mega bugs will live to see the sun rise? The cockroach approaches unafraid. The tarantula is poised to attack. Against any other bug, the battle would be over. But those ice pick fangs haven't yet found soft flesh. They're hooked on the cockroach's armored collar. The spider's holding on like a rodeo rider on a bucking bronco. These cockroaches just don't give in. It's putting up an epic struggle. It keeps trying to kick and kick. It's holding on to the ground. It's trying to move forward. Anything that it can do to get away from this tarantula. 
The tarantula isn't built to fight a long, drawn-out battle. Tarantulas have a very primitive form of lungs. While they're capable of great power over short bursts, prolonged struggles are not their forte. There's another problem, an annoying ant swarm. The cockroach catches a break. But just as it gets off the mat, round two begins. A fang plunges through the cockroach's armor. Dozens of mites who made a home under the cockroach's wings start leaving the sinking ship. This is really a web of life, and you see mites on almost everything. Mites are blood suckers. Now the tarantula sucks the life out of its once mighty opponent. In the bug world, the bigger you are, the harder you fall. When a vinegaroon and a strike-tailed centipede come to the surface, all hell will break loose. The rainforest is riddled with entrances to the underworld. From one dark gash, like some mythical monster, comes a strike-tailed centipede. Every night, it leaves its subterranean lair on a mission to murder. A hyperactive hunter plowing through the forest on 22 pairs of legs. We think that they'd be getting tripped up all the time, but with each one longer than the previous, they never get tangled. The centipede's speed and mobility are even more impressive when you realize it's almost blind. Its antennae act like all-seeing eyes. Beneath the antennae, on either side of the head, the main strike weapons, two modified legs, have become venom claws that deliver a toxic shock. Perched high on a leaf, a grasshopper thinks it's out of harm's way. But the strike-tailed express is hot on its chemical trail and severs a hind leg. Now that's poor defense. The grasshopper really should have jumped clear while it had a chance, because now when the centipede comes back, it's not going to have a leg to stand on. The venom claws now serve as silverware pulling soft flesh from the exoskeleton. Like a discerning diner ripping meat from a lobster tail. Nearby, another denizen of the dark emerges, hungry for blood. With its heavy armor and creeping crab-like walk, the Vinegaroon is a primeval nightmare. Vinegaroons are like B-grade movie idols. I mean, they're just really scary, monster-looking animals. Massive pedipalps ending in crude pincers grab prey in a merciless embrace, then crush it against serrated armor plates. Like all arachnids, the vinegaroon has eight legs, but only six are used for walking. The first two are sensors that the vinegaroon taps around like a blind person's cane. Its heavy armor is enough to deter most predators. If that doesn't work, the vinegaroon mounts a reeking rearguard action. 
They've got a gland at the base of their tail that is capable of spraying what's essentially vinegar as much as three feet away. They're able to move their tail around, aim it toward the predator, and then spray this mix of acetic acid and caprylic acid. It breaks down an invertebrate's exoskeleton. But will the vinegaroon's heavy weapons be enough to defeat the striped-tailed centipede when it attacks head on? Next, underworld demons fight to the death. Then, hardcore mean girls go head to head. And later, ultimate fighters face off. In the dead of night, the rainforest is haunted by underworld demons. A voracious, striped-tailed centipede follows a trail to its next meal. Meanwhile, a vinegaroon waits for its dinner to arrive. The centipede attacks with spiny feet and razor-sharp venom claws. The vinegaroon wields giant club-like pedipalps, spiked pincers, and serrated plates. Who'll survive the Battle of the Night Terrors? The centipede charges in like a hungry locomotive. But the vinegaroon grabs first. The centipede lashes its body around Venom claws looking for a way in. This centipede is tough, but this vinegaroon has it in a really, really tight grip in the pedipalps. It's almost like being caught in a nutcracker. Oh, that's gotta hurt. Even if the centipede manages to get away, he's going to have a terminal headache, and I don't think he's going to get very far. The centipede's legs kick feebly as claw-like chelicery tear into its neck, almost severing the head. Regurgitated digestive juices flood the wound, transforming solid flesh into centipede soup. So it seems that the old adage of live by the sword, die by the sword is just as applicable to the bug world as anywhere else. The vinegaroon savors its victory, ferrying its dead foe back to the underworld to feast in peace. When a banana spider clashes with an orange-horned katydid, it's a battle to die for. There are many femme fatales in the rainforest, but the orange-horned katydid is the ultimate mean girl. This is a body-slamming, take-no-prisoners, bite-your-head-off type. And trust me, when she's in a fighting mood, you don't want to mess with her. A sit-and-wait predator. Very little escapes this consummate murderess. Those huge compound eyes give the catadid very good vision. And the long antenna allow her to feel and sense prey from a great distance. So another predator would have to mount a surprise attack in order to have any kind of competitive advantage. Tangling with this bug is a daunting prospect. She's armed to the teeth. Savagely spiked back legs are spring-loaded weapons that deliver a lethal kick, or launch her out of danger in a single bound. These muscular hind limbs allow a katydid to jump up to 20 times its body length. Now, even on a human Olympic world record long jumper, 
can jump a distance maybe five times his body length. So this insect makes our most stellar athlete look pathetic by comparison. This hapless cricket could kick itself or straying into the katydid's murderous clutches. The only type of hugs that the orange horn katydid gives are fatal ones. She wraps them up with the spiked arms, piercing them with the spines, and then goes in for some hardcore mouth action from which they will never recover. Two sets of feelers help her work out the size and shape of her meal. Wickedly sharp mandibles with hardened black tips mangle the cricket's soft tissue. With her belly full, the leftovers are discarded like yesterday's lunch. The orange-horned katydid isn't the only ruthless female in this forest. With a sleek body, slender tapered legs, and attractive markings, the female banana spider is a bug world beauty queen. She rules her world ruthlessly from her webs that she weaves with spun gold. Concealed in her golden castle, the deadly queen waits for her victims to come by. A prey item has come in, she feels the vibrations, and she rushes down to grab it. With her victim trapped, the banana spider shows her true colors, and it's not a pretty sight. Behind hairy feelers, known as pedipalps, are large curved fangs that inject powerful venom then tear the prey apart. A tiny leaf hopper is just a snack. Next time, the beauty queen will be looking to supersize her meal. But not all of the banana spider's conquests are disposed of so easily. The orange-horned katydid has wings. What happens when the ultimate mean girl is on a collision course with a high-wire huntress. Next, female killers fight for their lives. Then, a guilt-edged destroyer takes on a deadly assassin. And later, fight club in the forest. jungle, a banana spider sits patiently in her silken death trap, waiting to welcome her next victim. Not far away, a female orange-horned katydid loiters with murderous intent. Two female killers at the top of their game are about to do battle. Dripping with toxic venom, the banana spider's fangs can take out any prey. But the orange-horned katydid's spiky limbs and razor-sharp mandibles could easily cut her enemy clean in half. Keen for a kill, the orange-horned katydid launches straight into danger. The banana spider approaches with caution. She's tapping that katydid with her front leg to see whether the katydid has much give. Is it able to get loose? The katydid pokes back, but the beauty queen now has her opponent in her sights. As long as the katydid can hold the spider's fangs at bay, it has some chance of surviving this. But defending yourself while being tangled and strong and sticky silk it's a pretty tall order. The katydid struggles to escape, but finds itself deeper in the web. The banana spider seizes its chance. 
sharp fangs pierce the katydid's abdomen, delivering their toxic payload. Even as the venom shuts down her nervous system, the orange-horned katydid tries to bite through the silken trap. The beauty queen approaches again. The katydid isn't giving up. She fights furiously. This is a great example of how deeply entrenched the will to survive is with these animals. She just keeps on fighting, no matter how bad the odds. Eventually, the katydid's struggles grow feeble. The web weaver delivers the death blow. It's been a titanic battle. The beauty queen wraps the spoils and begins her long victory feast. She doesn't bother with regal table manners. Digestive enzymes break down the katydid's body, turning soft tissue into a protein shake. In the bug world, Beauty queens don't get their kudos from crowning ceremonies. They get their kicks when their rivals are trash on the forest floor. When a flag-tailed assassin bug goes into battle against a golden carpenter ant, it's precision versus power. In the bug world, there is no shortage of bizarre-looking creatures. With its large body, tiny head, and elephant-like proboscis, the flag-tailed assassin bug takes the prize for goofy looks. Like red flag, Colorful tails protrude from the assassin bug's rear end. It could be to warn off a predator, attract a mate, we don't know. But what we do know is that the business side of things is on the other end. That extraordinary proboscis is usually tucked up under the head. But ignore it at your peril. It's rapier sharp. This bug is a methodical murderer. This is a very stealthy hunter. It stalks its prey very softly and smoothly, controlling every movement precisely. Bulging compound eyes register the slightest movement. Thick pipe cleaner legs bristle with sensory hairs. Twin claws are like grappling hooks for climbing. Antennae aren't just sensors. They're part of the arsenal. She would do well to prime her weapons. Nearby, a sworn enemy is on the prowl, shining like a Christmas decoration. A female golden carpenter ant forages for food. They're called carpenter ants because they dig burrows into decaying trees or soft trees, and they're basically just using their jaws to gnaw their way in. Tough serrated mandibles are not just woodworking tools. They're vicious weapons, enough for even a solitary ant to take on much larger spiders and scorpions. These guys can be really nasty. They go in, they bite another animal, and then they curl their abdomen around and spray formic acid into the wound. It's corrosive, it causes burns. Formic acid is something that everything wants to stay away from. But what happens when the golden pit bull tries to take down the bizarre assassin? Next, vicious jaws versus a deadly spear. Then, lethal killers let loose. 
Among the rainforest blossoms, a flag-tailed assassin bug is on a stakeout. Close by, a golden carpenter act is out on the prowl. The flag-tailed assassin bug will use its proboscis to inject toxic saliva and flesh-melting digestive juices. The golden carpenter act will use its toughened mandibles and burning acid. Who will emerge with their honor and life intact? Unintimidated, the ant moves first. But the assassin is ready. This time, the ant uses its speed advantage. But it's not quick enough. The probing proboscis finds its mark. The assassin bug's venom attacks both the nervous and the muscular system, paralyzing the prey in just three to five seconds after being injected. The proboscis then switches from syringe to drinking straw. The victim's liquefied innards are sucked up by this all-in-one instrument of death. It's been a red-letter day for the flag tail. No mess, no fuss. Everything you'd expect from an experienced assassin. When a bronzed huntsman faces off against a slender-necked mantis, one of them will be down for the count. The slender-necked mantis has all the moves and the killer instinct of a cage fighter. This animal wouldn't be out of place in a round of ultimate fighting. It can pull combination moves that wouldn't be legal anywhere outside the bug world. In the blink of an eye, long raptorial arms lined with needle-like knuckle dusters land killer punches. The muscles that control the mantis's raptorial strike are very strong and incredibly fast. In fact, they can do two strikes in the time it would take a housefly just to prepare its wings for takeoff. This slender weight is built like a natural-born fighter. Its elongated neck allows the head to rotate 180 degrees. Its huge compound eyes are constantly peeled or prey. It all comes down to movement for them. This is what attracts them, and they can see movement from a long way off. Waiting for prey, the slender neck stays out of trouble by shadow boxing. Shuffling, ducking, and weaving. Mantis also employ two weird behavioral forms of camouflage. The first is to sway back and forth like a leaf in the wind. But the second is to disguise its footsteps with jerky, irregular motions while sneaking up on a prey item. Its ultra-trim physique belies an insatiable appetite. Put simply, this mantis is an eating machine. Don't mistake skinny for puny. This mantis can take on hard-hitting opponents and win, and it has a huge appetite. 
How it maintains that trim little figure, it's beyond me. An approaching cockroach doesn't see the sucker punch coming. Her capacity to hang on was with any rock climber to shame. She's gripping that leaf with just eight tiny little claws, yet even when the cockroach struggles, she has no problems maintaining her foothold. With its victim under control, the mantis really puts the hurt on. Once the mantis has grabbed its prey, it typically pins the most troublesome parts inside of its reptile arms, while it then goes in with the mandibles to try to do as much damage as possible. Typically, it'll go straight for the head, and once that's gone, it kind of removes the will to fight back. Then something extraordinary happens. With its head in the mantis' mouth, the cockroach gives birth to a squirming swarm of instant orphans. As one life ebbs away, 20 more crawl into the world. Well, if you've ever bought into the notion that everything natural is warm and fuzzy, this should put an end to it. In the wild, survival is a struggle from day one. That struggle is about to get nasty. The bronze huntsman spider is another hard-hitting hunter, always looking for a fight. Huntsmen are ambush predators. They basically are willing to hunt on the ground or in the trees and wait until prey passes by. And then they lunge at it fast, scoop it up in their arms, and then tear it apart with their strong fangs. Like all huntsman spiders, this prize fighter hugs the surface. Its legs hinge, not vertically, but laterally. Most spiders stand upright, but what the huntsmen have done is what would be dorsal has rotated, so the legs are laterally oriented. And this lateral orientation means that they're able to scuttle sideways very rapidly. The bronzed huntsman has eight eyes arranged in two rows of four. But this street fighter hunts less by eyesight and more from the faintest telltale movements of air. Huntsman legs are covered with sensors that are very, very attuned to vibrations. A moth's slightest movement is like a bell ringing for round one. Unfortunately for the moth, the bronze huntsman also has a prize fighter's chin. Huntsmen have big, strong chelicera, and they're really able to grab prey, pierce strong exoskeletons, and then tear it to pieces. At the same time, Digestive juices, like acid, liquefy the moth's insides. When she's through, all that's left is some fuzz around the fangs. It will pay to keep her weapons well-oiled. This champion has a challenger. When the slender-necked mantis and the bronze huntsman enter the ring, the loser faces sudden death. Next, the rainforest fight of the night. In the bug world, every night is fight night. Each bout carries the ultimate prize purse, survival. The bronze huntsman and the slender-necked mantis are both unbeaten champions. The huntsman has huge fangs and potent venom. The mantis bristles with deadly spikes 
and rips opponents to pieces with razor-sharp mandibles. Who will survive this fight? Both bugs are locked eye to eye in a monster stare down. The mantis makes the first move, advancing boldly up the leaf. That is real commitment. But whether it's brave or foolish, with its guard up, the mantis is rocked by a lightning one-two combination. The bronze huntsman looks to up the ante. The mantis neatly sidesteps. The sparring continues. Then the mantis gambles on a full frontal assault. As tactics go, it's not what you'd call inspired. The mantis finds its slender body bent over backwards, gripped in a killer clinch. With no referee to call break, the huntsman's fangs plunge like daggers into the mantid's thorax. Often, spiders will directly try to orient toward the head of its potential prey because this takes it out lots faster than if it nips the back end or nips a leg. The mantis refuses to throw in the towel, biting and grabbing its opponent's pedipal with a sharp toothed arm. That has got to hurt. These pedipalps are really sensitive, and the spider is going to be in real trouble if it manages to rip these pedipalps off. So it's injecting venom as fast as it possibly can. This final struggle might be a bright display of courage in the face of certain death, but I'm afraid it's too little, too late. This former champion won't be getting off the canvas. No doubt, the bronze huntsman deserved the gold medal, or in this case, green. The huntsman settles down to enjoy her trophy. But this isn't over. An ant swarm wants its share. There's no stopping them. The champion abandons her victory feast. After all, there are plenty more meals on her fight card tonight. In a bug war, there are no medals for bravery. A full frontal assault can become a lost cause. Relentless attacks can leave you dead in your tracks. And heavy weapons can be dead weight. In a monster bug battle, the only measure of success is when you're the last one standing. <laughs> <laughs>